Hello and welcome to a Tabletop Bellhop Cardboard Coat Check. Today, someone has checked in this game, uh, specifically Ravensburger, who sent me this game for the purpose of review. Uh, no other compensation was provided. So I want to check this game into our hotel today. The problem is I got to see what's in it first, just in case, you know, health and safety reasons. So that's our silly name, Cardboard Coat Check, for our review videos. Our unboxing video, sorry. I want to take a look at what's in this box. So that's the question we're answering tonight. What's in the box for Jaws Ravensburger? I word it that way because I am the tabletop bellhop, your cardboard concierge. I'm here to answer your gaming and game night questions. Think of me as a dear Abby for gamers. That's what we do at Tabletop Bellhop is we answer your gaming questions. You can send questions to questions at tabletopbellhop.com or go to tabletopbellhop.com, our webpage, and where you can find uh, answers to other people's questions. You can also ask questions there if you click on Ask the Bellhop. You can also find news, reviews, and other cool gaming stuff, including unboxing videos like these. So today we are going to open up Jaws, a game of strategy and suspense from Ravensburger. We're going to throw this one down here on the table. I'm going to tip the camera down a bit because you don't want to see me. You want to see what's in the game. We're going to take a look at what's inside. I like to do these live, so we are live right now on Twitch, twitch.tv slash tabletopbellhop. Uh, if you dig the whole streaming thing, you can catch us Wednesday nights at 9.30 p.m. Eastern, where we record, sorry, 9 p.m. Eastern, well, 9 p.m. Eastern, where we record the Tabletop Bellhop Gaming Podcast. On Thursday nights, we do other live streams like what I'm recording right now, and Friday nights, we do actual plays, which right now tends to be us playing four-player Gloomhaven. So check that out. Make sure you hit follow. For those of you watching on YouTube, we got lots of other videos. Make sure you check out the other channels and hit that subscribe button. On to the game. All right, so the first thing, this is how this game comes. They don't come shrink wrapped, they come with tape. So I am gonna grab my handy dandy hobby knife and cut that tape, because I am not one to peel off stickers. I figure they'll probably damage the box. I'd much rather just give it a nice cut. When using a hobby knife, always cut away from yourself. All right. Let us see. You know what? We're going to start with the back of the box. We're going to take a look at what's on here. It says Jaws, two to four players, age 12 and up, 60 minute playtime. Experience Jaws as a suspenseful tabletop strategy game. It's interesting they called it a strategy game. One player menaces the island of Amity as three ton great white, while the other players go on the hunt as Brody, Hooper, and Quint. Two thrilling phases of gameplay capture the edge of your seat excitement of the classic film. If you want to stay alive, then ante up. It tells you the two. You're going to do Amnidiathan and then the Orca, which from what I understand isn't quite big enough. Let's take a look at what is in the box. So we have a nice looking instruction book here right on top. Fairly thin. Amity. Amity I keep saying Amity. Amity Iden welcomes you. Game overview. We already kind of covered that. There are two acts. Does say stop, watch the play actual play video. Very cool. I love seeing that. Modern gamers, you have it so easy now. I personally still prefer to read rule books myself, but I know there are a lot of people out there that would prefer to watch a watch it play video. So it's cool that Ravensburg is supporting that. Uh rule book we have fairly dark color with dark text. That's all right. I prefer dark text to light text on a dark background. I see a nice picture of the island. It looks like lots of components. Looks like there's a bit of assembly required. So you're putting meeple in boats. That's all it is. Let me get just a little bit closer. Lots of text. Wow. This looks a little heavier than the last few games I've taken a look at. There's a lot going on on here and not a lot of uh, art on this page. So this looks like it's going to be a heavier game. I should have looked up the weight on Board Game Geek before I got going. Now there are two complete acts to the game and they're completely different sessions of the rule book. So it looks like they're gonna be completely different gameplay between the two acts. Uh, it is worth noting, I have not played this game. This is my first look at the game. You're getting my thoughts live as I flip through this for the first time. Lots of interesting symbols. So I have to thank Sean for pointing out the weight is a 2.28, which is not heavy, but it's also not light. That'd be just a little under, say, Race for the Galaxy. Rule book is 11, no, 12 pages. Uh, actually, no, it'd be, it'd be 11 pages. The last page is about how you could actually play Act 1 and Act 2 separately and includes an FAQ. Then we move on to the first board. 
I'm going to guess this is going to be two-sided. Again, we have a mounted board. Ravensburger is definitely back to the mounted board look. That's a nice, solid board. I'm amused that you start with the ship sunk. I'm assuming you put stuff on top of that. Cards go underneath, and then we have the island. This looks like it'd be a nice small footprint game, which would probably be good for playing at uh, pubs or at bars, cafes. And we have a very small amount of punch boards. So we're going to take a look at those. All right, standard thickness, a little bit thin, but not too bad. Punch board here. Uh, we have parts of the ship. And looks like damaged parts of the ship. So it looks like the ship's going to slowly sink. That's interesting. So the board is obviously the sunk ship. This is the fine ship. And this is the partially sunken parts of the ship. Then we have a bunch of, wow, these are tiny little counters for things that are going to be floating in the water, obviously. We have swimmers and such. And, well, of course, the shark tiles. These are two-sided. Um, looks like there's some... It looks like the shark does different things. Interesting. And that's it for punch boards. So not a lot of punch boards in this one. We have a rather thick plastic bag. We have the shark tracker. I think we have some form of hidden movement here. How is this field shot? It's just stuck. Yeah, so you have a pad full of shark tracker. So this definitely looks like a game where you're one of the players at least is going to be moving hidden movement and recording how they move. So think of games like um, Letters from Whitechapel or I'm drawing a blank on those style of games. There are lots of them. So I think Chad in our chat room who has pointed out that Act 1 directly influences Act 2. So if the shark player plays better in Act 1, he gets extra resources in Act 2. But it never gets to be run away, which is good to hear. Fury of Dracula. Thank you. That is another one of those style of games. Wooden components. I gotta say, after unboxing a couple other Ravensburger games, it's nice to see actual wooden components. First off, we're gonna grab these dice. I gotta say, these are nice. The nice translucent I have to hope, being the red color, these are shark attack dice. They have to be. I have not played the game, but they've got to be. Someone's getting bit. And we have... I can't tell what the... Oh, clips. So these are probably going to go on this tracker here. So we have some little red clips. Mixed feelings on these on games. It depends. Some games do it right, some games do it wrong. So we do have trackers, and we are going to put clips on them. And you know what? We're going to check it out and see how good or bad these are. All those seem nice. Okay, so you have Hooper's card here. Uh, there's an Act 1, Act 2 size. Uh, obviously, Act 1, you don't have anything to track. Uh, again, we're using red counters. I'm thinking this is probably damage of some sort. Uh, it is see-through. That blows away um, Betrayal at House on the Hill for a clip that actually works. That seems solid. Seems like it'll last repeated play. These are nice and thick, which I do like. That's a nice thickness for a card, especially if you're going to be sliding things on and off it and up and down it. I'm impressed. That's that's nice quality there. Uh, we do have a Brody card. We do have a Quint card. Again, I haven't seen the movie, so I don't know who they are. And of course, we have the shark. And it also has two sides. Oh, I'm going to put that clip back into the baggie. So it doesn't get damaged. I gotta admit, I like the anchor motif. That's a nice touch. Though really, why are we paying to for people to put cute art on their box inserts? But it's a nice choice. All right, these wooden components are cool. I, the shark's just awesome. Look at this. Wooden shark meeple. That is awesome. I love that. I don't know what I want to use this for, but like I want to steal it for RPGs and stuff. And then we got boats. We have two different types of boats that hold the meeple. Interestingly, they didn't use Meeple Meeple. They're, they're slightly taller. They're like Meeple with, with, with extra legs. It's kind of a weird choice. I don't know why people don't just stick with the standard. And they fit in the boats. And not well. Well, they fit well. They just don't stay any particular way. So there's two boats, three Meeple for the three characters. Um, based on the colors I'm seeing here, I'm guessing they did some colorblind testing, but I don't know for sure. 
Then we're going to have a deck of cards. In a shrink wrap bag. That's a nice touch. So they're not going to be flopping around inside. Quality of the cards is decent. These are not overly thin cards. I like it. All right. So we have crew gear. Uh, Hooper gear. So specific gear for the characters in crew gear. You've got a baseball bat. I'm thinking that's not a good thing to fight a shark with. Pistol, probably a little better. Machete, I don't know, that might be better than a pistol. Flares, rifles, and so on. Artwork's decent. It is drawn art, I think. If it's drawn, it's well drawn. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's drawn art. Ammo, let's see if we can get the camera to focus on that pretty good. We'll grab another random one. Got some chum, throw that in the water. After the shark locks in their resurface token, you may play chum. The shark player must reveal one of the resurface tokens they did not choose. After using chum, discard it. Each of these has their own rules. All right, more cards. We got shark ability cards. A bunch of shark ability cards. So a whole stack of these. We are looking at no artwork, just really quick ramming speed, making waves. Kind of odd they didn't throw art on this. Something. Extra strength with some rules at the bottom. Text is a good size. Um, I complain about si uh, font size all the time. On our podcast, I can read this from here. I don't need to take my glasses off. That's nice. Bonus points for that. We have resurface cards. I have no clue not knowing the game. Shows like they show up at different points around the boat. So I have to assume the, the shark's going to pop up somewhere and the players have to guess where. It's a rough guess. I don't actually know. Then we have Amity Events. Really interesting art choices here. Huh. These are probably screenshots. That's why. All right, we get screenshots. That's why. I was thinking, I'm like... That's a really odd picture. We have the 4th of July. Uh, we got a bunch of um, directions here. Probably telling you where the swimmers are going to be. Where the swimmers are because it's Michael Brody's birthday. Holiday roast. And that is it. Those are all of the components and what you get in Jaws from Ravensburger. I love the fact that I now have a bag to put these cards back in instead of tossing them loose back into the box. Wooden components, bonus points. So far, out of three Ravensburger games I have opened tonight, this has the best component quality. Uh, thicker cards, thicker cardboard, uh, really nice score pad thing here. Well, it's not score pad, it's a tracking pad to track where the shark is, obviously. That's, that's, just, that's a good quality component right there. It's got a nice feel to it. Uh, I don't think I need the extra baggie. The punch boards aren't overly thin or thick. They're decent size. Board's a nice, um, forgetting the term. Ah, it's driving me nuts. I can't remember the term. Wargaming term for, it's a mounted board. Thank you, brain, for putting that in. Nice mounted board. Two-sided. Art looks nice and clear. Game looks decent. One versus many. Jaws. Hidden movement game. If you don't want to play nuns on the run, this may be the game for you. I'm going to tip things back up here. So, that was Jaws from Ravensburger. Uh, you got to see it the same time I saw it. I'm curious about this one. This looks interesting. I have not played a lot of the one versus many men. I have games. I've tried Fury of Dracula. I've tried Nuns on the Run. I haven't played the sci-fi one with his name. I, Spectre Ops. I have not played Spectre Ops. It's just not something I normally play, but it's not that I'm against them. So, looks interesting. Uh, you got two different phases, two different sections of the game. There is a way to play them separately or play them together. Sounds like phase one impacts phase two. Sounds interesting. Looks like a solid game. So, I do have to say, Ravensburger did send this for review purposes. You will be able to see a review in the coming weeks. I don't know when I'm going to get to this one exactly. Uh, it might be this weekend. We'll see. Uh, you want to follow Tabletop Bellhop on social media. Go to Tabletop Bellhop, one word. Twitter's your best bet at this point. Facebook also works. And I send out notices for everything I do, and you'll be able to see when I review the game, you get to see my thoughts on it. I'm sure I'll be posting a video here on YouTube as well, and we'll 
live stream and talk about it on our podcast. If you dig podcasts, uh, check out your podcatcher and search for the Tabletop Bellhop Gaming Podcast, where myself and my co-host Sean answer your gaming and game night questions, as well as usually do a review, and then we talk about the games we played in the week previous. Other things that we put out that you may want to check out are, is our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash tabletopbellhop, where we put out videos like this unboxing video, as well as actual plays and segments from our live podcast recording. That live podcast recording you can catch on Wednesday nights at 9 p.m. Eastern, twitch.tv slash tabletopbellhop. All right, that's about it for me. If you liked what you saw today, make sure you do that thing that makes all content creators happy and hit the heart, thumbs up, like, subscribe, follow button, whatever platform of choice you happen to be seeing this on. If you really dig the content we're doing, it'd be awesome if you headed over to patreon.com slash tabletopbellhop and consider tipping your bellhop. For Tabletop Bellhop, I'm Mo. Good night and game on.